Welcome to LNP Renewable System Critical. Today we are going to discuss some of the basics of Internet of Things. Okay, and uh, we are today we are going to discuss part two of this session. If you have missed the part one, we had provided the link below. So by referring that link, so that you will try to get the idea of the things that we had discussed in the part one. Okay. So what are the things that we are going to discuss in the part two today? Today we are going to discuss what are the access technologies used in the IOTs. Okay, and what is I to be eight zero two fifteen point four protocol access technology? Where this commonly used? And what are the different layers of Zigbee and the Zigbee IP protocols? Okay, what is the physical layer and MAC layer format and topologies used in I to be eight zero two fifteen point four protocols? And what are the auxiliary security field frame format of this I to be eight zero two fifteen point four protocol? So now let's try to know basics of this I, um, access protocols. Okay. So I to be eight zero to fifteen point four, which is an older one, but it is a foundational wireless protocol for connecting the smart objects. We are using this I to be eight zero to fifteen point four protocol. Then, if you are going into the fifteen point four G and fifteen point four E, it is an improvement done over the eight zero to fifteen point four. Okay, so it mainly targeted for the utilities and the smart city deployments. And the next most important category is that I to be 1901.2A. This is the technology which is used for connecting the smart devices over the power line networks. It means we can use this in the metro stations. Okay. The next most important thing is that I to be 802.11AH. Okay, which is a well-known standard. Okay. Uh, we are pretty aware about the 802.11, which is used for Wi-Fi standard. It is an advancement over this technology. Okay, and LoRa WAN. It is a scalable technology. The main purpose of designing this technology is to transmit and to do the uh, signals in the longest distances. Okay, and the next NB-IoT and other LTE variations. These are the technologies which are often we are using in the mobile services. Okay, uh, even if you you might have heard about different spectrum, that is. 2G spectrum, 3G, 4G, and even now we are into the 5G spectrum technologies. So these are the licensed spectrum technologies um, based on the different bandwidths, uh, different spectrums. Okay, like uh, Airtel, Jio. Now we have so many technologies. These, these are the some of the examples of these protocols. So what are the why we are uh, going for the standardization and alliances? Because in order to maintain the protocol for a particular technology, we need standard bodies. Okay. Why? What is the purpose of this physical layer, and why we are going for a MAC layer, and why we need to go for some sort of topology? Okay, and why we need security, and why we need omni-two technologies? Simple. Uh, if you want to either, okay, if you want to do uh, any sort of, uh, you know, if you are going for any sort of methods, either you can go uh, use only these three methods. One, it can be a wired network. Or it can be a wireless network. Okay, either in two methods only you can do. Either through wired or through wireless you can do. So for that, definitely you need a physical layer. Next, this media access control. It bridges the physical layer and the data link control. Okay. Next is the topology because different technologies support different topologies. Okay, and security. Security aspect is very much important for the technology because nowadays there is a possibility for hackings also. So for that. Technology is very much important. It is the competitive technologies because if everyone is providing the same, okay, uh, you know, uh, what about the if you are providing the same and similar technologies, okay, uh, which is not suitable for a particular uh, or a different projects, then there is no use of uh, technology. So there should be a suitable alternative for different requirements and. Uh, Where this I to be eight zero to fifteen point four is commonly used. It is commonly used for building automation systems. If you want to go for automotive networks, you can use this I to be eight zero to fifteen point four. Okay. Even for the wireless sensor networks, you can go for this I to be eight zero to fifteen point four. And even for the interactive toys and the remote control, we can go for this I to be eight zero to fifteen point four. Okay. Now let us try to know other, uh, other different protocols and its uses. If you are going for a Zigbee, okay, it defines the upper layer component. Okay, if you are going for a building automation or a home automation, healthcare industry, we can use this Zigbee. It plays important role. 
and the next protocol is a six low pan so it is an advancement or it is an adaptation made over the ipv6 network okay and what is the, what about the zigbee ip so zigbee ip it also adapt it is an advancement over the uh, six low pan and the ipv6 network even for the rpl routing protocols means uh, if six low pan adopts the ipv6 packets and this uh, zigbee ip adopts uh, six low pan adoption layer ipv6 network layer and the rpl routing protocols next is the isa 100 dot 11a it is nothing but the international society of automation that is all the wireless system for the industrial automation follows this protocol okay next is the wireless heart it was established in 2006 okay it has a frequency band of 2.4 gigahertz okay next is the thread it is constructed on top of the six low pan and ipv6 okay it is most in, uh, secure and a reliable mesh network to connect and control the products in the home so if you are making a, a layer comparison between the zigbee protocol and the zigbee ip protocol so as you can see in the zigbee we have only physical mac network application but if you are going for a zigbee ip protocol as we saw earlier okay uh, it covers okay it covers every everything there is Uh, six low pan adaptation layer ipv6 rpl udp and tcp everything okay and uh, if you want to study in detail about this i to be 8 to 15.4 physical layer okay uh, it it has a transmission options either you can go for 2.4 gigahertz for 16 channel operation or if you are planning for a 915 megahertz then you can go for 10 channel okay the data rates will be 40 kilobytes and if you are going for a 868 megahertz for using one channel then the transmission speed will be around 20 kilobytes per second okay next what is the physical format of this i to be 80 to 15.4 so we had given uh, you the representation here we have a physical service data unit frame length and a charter frame delimiter and permeable and if you consider the total number of bytes from the permeable to the frame length it will be 6 bytes and for the physical service data it consumes around 0 to 127 bytes and if you going for a mac format okay if you make a pretty comparison okay uh, in the mac format we have a mac header and we have a mac payload and we have a mac footer in the mac header it consumes around 2 bytes 1 byte and 4 to 20 bytes it has a different addressing fields okay and for the it has a it's, it's a mac payload is variable one and for the mac code it will be two bytes only okay and what is the purpose of this data frame so the data frame it handles the transfer of data okay and what is the beacon frame it is used in transmission of beacons from a pan coordinator and what is the acknowledgement frame it confirms the successful reception of the frame okay and what is the mac command frame it is responsible for controlling the communication between the devices and if you going for a topology mostly we can build using star peer to peer and mesh topology there is an example of an uh, mesh network topology and what is the frame format for the auxiliary security header field if you see we have a mac mac payload and a mac header so in, if you categorize it in depth so this uh, mac header and the payload memory plays important role in the security enabled bit in the frame control it, uh, if you uh, uh, you know set the bit of 1 then the security feature is getting enabled which controls the most important part that is mac header and the payload thank you so much uh, please subscribe and press the bell icon if you want to know more and learn more you can contact us we have provided the contact details here um uh, we are also providing design installation testing and commissioning support um you can contact us uh um and session is not yet over we have a uh, four more parts in the forthcoming sessions we are providing the link below uh, using that link try, uh, try to know about those uh parts as well and if you miss missed any of the parts because this session is classified into six parts okay so if you missed anything uh, in the description we have provided the link so by referring that link you can able to know about it 
So we are also providing um, solar on-grid, off-grid, hybrid application design, installation, risk and commissioning support. And for if you are for the colleges, we are providing uh, trainings for the PLC programming. Okay. And if you want to know more about the Internet of Things, you can contact us. We have provided the contact details here. We are providing trainings also. We are also providing consultancy supports for solar on-grid, off-grid, and hybrid applications. And if you want any solar fencing kits, we are providing uh, solar fencing kits also. You can contact us. We have provided the contact details. Thank you so much.